Hi, I'm Drew Hutchison. You're tuned to Local Bias, and today is a special episode in that we are on location in the art studio of Joseph McCarthy. We can only cover some of your paintings, but what I was hoping we could do is talk about the process, because you tend to work in a lot of series. And so this, for instance, painting is the first in a series. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, this is one of my, uh, when I say earlier, it's a, a couple of years, probably uh, 2015, I'm not sure. Um, but um, I used a lot of uh, primary colors and uh, a lot of brush strokes, and, and, and I like working on large canvases. And so this is a, 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 what I call an earlier work. And, I, and, I, and you're right, you, you're, you're ter I do do in series. And, I, and sometimes I don't know if that's to my detriment or not because I move on from series to series, and they are series in my head for a couple of years, and then I go on to something else. And, um, and sometimes I go back. But yeah, this is one that um, I had uh, uh, done in public. So do you know what, what inspired you? I mean, so what does inspire you? What, what, inspi what happens is um, I, um, I put canvases out, <clears throat> raw canvas. I have some sort of idea. What I mean by that is I don't, uh, like I'm going to do landscapes or I'm going to do florals or I'm going to do something. And what happens is I go in and I set them up in the studio here, and I have three easels. <clears throat> Not more than that, but I have three, and I'll start three paintings. And what I do is I just start, I know a lot of people don't want, I just start applying paint. Before so, jet, you don't do gessoed? Uh, they're pre-gessoed, and sometimes I will gesso a canvas, Okay. Um, but they're all pre-gessoed. These are, uh, uh, this one is uh, a commercial uh, chai, uh, uh, commercial uh, canvas okay. from Windsor Newton. Right. And so I know the can. I've been working on these for 16 years. So okay. they change depending on where they where they get the, the wood in the back and so forth. But yes, so okay. yeah. Oh, I never not paint on, if you're oil paint, you never not want to do that. You want to paint on a, a gesso surface. So they're all gesso. Okay. I have painted on um, linen, which is a, which, which gives you a, uh, uh, and that's a more tighter weave canvas. Uh, it's a little more expensive, and, and it, the paint just flows. It's right. amazing because of the tooth of the canvas. So anyway, the, the, and I just put them out. So I'm sort of the, um, the artist that uh, uh, is more interested in, as long as I know it's archival, it's light fast, and it's going you know, to do what I need it to do in time, and, and, and I do, the oil and the canvas and the way I do it, I really don't pay too much attention to a lot of materials in the industry, uh, even though I do demos right. for people, for Winter Newton, uh, throughout the New England area. But I, um, I'm just interested in getting that paint on the canvas. So it's, it's, a, it's a very winded. I three canvases, and I start painting, and, what, and they become multiple paintings in my head. They, there's the starters, mm -hmm. then the in-between, and then when I think I'm finished, <laughs> And then a lot of them, I realized I should have never painted over them because I take pictures with my cell phone. Right. And I look back and I'm, oh, why did I overpaint that? So, right. Yeah, they become, so there's a transition. So there's three series. So that's, that's how I paint. And this is going to seem as dry as toast. Uh, people always, I think, sometimes uh, have preconceived ideas that this idea. And I let the painting dictate what it is. And sometimes it happens right away um, that it, it it starts talking to me whether it's, uh, and I, I use a lot of areas like Halifax, Vermont, Buckland, Mass. These are all places familiar. And they start becoming, even though they're not landscapes, right. a lot of them become landscapes in my mind because I've been here, I was born in, 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 in Greenfield. But I, uh, so you're kind of representing the energy of a place. Yes. So it's not a literal representation, clearly. No. But you feel it. Yeah. Okay. Because this is a darker color than I've ever seen from you. Yeah, I, yeah, it is. I, I mean, love it, though. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very rich. Yeah. And I love the way it combines with this. In fact, you, your whole, this, this is all very, to me, it's the, the mixture of the, the medium gives it a very glossy, you know, a little bit more glossy as opposed to a matte look. Uh, and the, I like the sheen. And then, of course, this expression of color right here is so startling compared to, because most of your works, what I've noticed, everything kind of, there's a blending there's, there's a almost a pastelish quality to it yes. in, in the color in your the colors that you use. This is unlike that. Yeah, that, yeah. There's a very stark difference. I 
I'm highly influenced by um, uh, Emily Mason, okay. uh, who's uh, Wolf Kahn's uh, wife uh, up here in Brattleboro. And he's, she's an accomplice. She's an amazing uh, painter. And I come across some of her work. I actually got to meet her and so forth. But big influence at this time. This She deals in a lot of color and big canvases, and it's pure color. And um, so I, that, that was what I was in. I was influenced. These paintings, I call them um, this E paintings. Just I mark them on the back, and I know that they're my Emily Mason paintings, ah. not, even though they're not Emily Mason. Right, paintings. but still, they're informed by. Yeah, it's just, and I've, I've, I've met her a couple times, and I've uh, gone to her opening. So I was just, uh, you know, basically an Emily Mason groupie. Sure. And, and I just loved what she did. So a lot of that influence is uh, Emily Mason. Okay. Now, do you mostly use on this one wide brushes, or are you using? Yeah, these are. Um, these are done with my uh, hog bristle brushes, which is a good oil painting brush. Um, so sometimes I don't. I, but you I, want back and forth, back and forth, back yeah, and I forth, just smoothing it out quickly. Um, I work quickly. I do, and then it'll get to a point where uh, I'll sit with them, and uh, I'll sit there, and I'll, I, I have them here, and I'm sitting across the room, and I just sit with them, and I walk up and down, and. Uh, and then I might go to lunch or something, and then I'll come back and I might end up coming in and putting just that on, and then this bleed, and um, and sometimes and, and it works. And then sometimes you do that, and then you really got to, right. You right. you end up doing something over here, and you've lost what you started with. So yeah, I'll come in and just I put that's the that's the most fun for me is putting the uh, having me at a stage where you're just putting the last bit of. Uh, color on there. And I you know it, when it works? I mean, where, yeah. or when I think, it, yeah, when I think it works, it works for me. Yeah. And you, and you move on. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So let's move on. Yeah. Okay. So Joe, we've, we've returned to now the second painting that's representing basically different phases of series that you've worked with. This is a more of a middle period for you. Yes. It's, and you know, I look at it and I see that You've you've changed your sheen. You've changed. You have a little bit like here. You have more. It seems like this last piece you put on. You, it's transparent. So you put some thinner in there or something so that you could show what was before. How long did the paint below it dry before you went over the top of it? Um, when I paint these, um, and and there's a, a medium that I add. It's called liquid, which is a, a, a Fast medium. Drying. Fast drying medium, but it will also alter the consistency or the viscosity of the paint. So in this case, I found um, that uh, I've gone to Liquid Original, which is uh, the, the meat quick drying medium, and I know that in oil paint you want the undersurface is drying completely uh, quickly, right. or or at least yeah, you don't want to paint. Uh, you know, the the, the mantra is. Um, uh, Fat, uh, fat over lean. You don't right. want to paint lean over fat because the its oxygen it has to breathe to to, to right. dry. So the oxidation. So I'm a thin coat, and I wanted to keep the. I wanted to get some transparency uh, going on. Whereas the the other one that we just talked about, um, it um, was more layered and, and it had borders. This this sort of has no borders, and then I. Then I tried to bring out some borders because it would have been just a airy right. thing if I didn't. And they become they become a lot of fun for me. You know, just different areas for me that I like. You know, the whole painting. You know, I like it, but there's certain areas that I just right really like. So yeah, I wanted to make a transition. You know, I take it upon myself just and and I go with the flow. I know that um, it just. I go where it takes me. All this, it sounds so corny sometimes, but that's what I'm doing. And, um, and there's still the, the influence of uh, Emily Mason in this, and then right. I'm throwing in some, you know, my stuff, whatever, whatever you want to call my stuff. Um, so yeah, and, and I love the size. I'm, I'm going to, this, this size for me is a 40 by 40 canvas. I just fell in love with that size. And um, anyway, so is that because it's not too onerous? You've been working on much bigger pieces. Oh yeah, the uh, what I found is for practicality, my car. When I buy every time I buy a new car, the first thing I do is I measure right. how wide a painting I can get in. I can get a forty by forty in my SUV. I can't get a forty-eight by sixty. Right. 
I can get 60, but I can't get... 30. So there are practical considerations. Oh, yeah. It's amazing, and, and it's really frustrating on, on one side because uh, it's sort of dictating what scale you work on. Uh, so, but I do work on uh, 48 by 60s, which I, I can tie on. I've actually delivered into New Jersey. I can tie them on my roof. I put them in, I have them in boxes, and it, it works. Okay, and, and all I've right, I believe in Boston, you. I would be Jersey, scared. Uh, and I make sure it's not raining that day, but uh, there, it's impervious to the rain. You just don't want the wood to get wet. So, yes. Yeah. Right. So, 40 by 40. Uh, I, I love the size. I just ordered some more. And right. all of a sudden, to your palette, you still have this color going on. Yes, my, the cadmium. That, that's where, yes. The, the cadmiums were, I was possessed by the oranges and reds, and I... I want to say 10 years. Yeah. I mean, I've just been obsessed with them. So in the last two to three years, that all changed. As you, you know. So that's where I was headed with these. They, they started changing and evolving into not getting rid of totally, but flipping my palette. Right. From more of these, uh, the blues and the cooler colors, and less of the... You know, and so it's sort of, you know, it looks like oh, somebody, you just put paint and then you put this color on, you put this color on. So there's this whole process. And right. I'm starting to figure out if I paint, you know, um, and by no standard of the world, but by my standards, right. I can do 10 paintings. I'm going to hit three that I just really like. Right. Four that are just really work. And the rest have gotten me to those four. What, what did you do to get this texturing going on? Did you scrape that with something? No, no, it's just, well, what happens is it's an overlay. It's probably the first layer. See, there's a but first layer. It's so thin, layer. that's why it allows the texture to come yes, through. Yes, yes. And so I will overpaint. You know, a little muddy here. Sometimes I'll go back in. I don't want to get too heavy right. because I don't want to change that, that, how can I say, that, that, that uh, fluidity of the whole paint. I mean, right. if I put a big gob on here, it would stand out. Right. So the trick for me is to keep it all and not get... Uh, too muddy, and what happens is these wonderful areas uh, start coming out, and they're, sometimes they're one. Sometimes I go back in, and I'll put another color, and then it just brings it out. So right. anyway, right. It's, well, uh, this is lovely. I it, absolutely love. Thank it. you. It's a, but let's move on. All righty. Here we are with our uh, third painting representing your. I don't know if it's growth because, it. But but your your journey as an artist. Um, I suppose you have been growing, haven't you? Yeah, I hope. I hope. Yeah, I do. Okay. But, the, but the thing is, is, I see so much beauty in your early works, that I don't discount them at all. But you are, you are a different artist now than you were then. You're expressing yourself differently. And the first thing I noticed about this painting, which, uh, by the way, when was this one done? I, I added this to the, uh, to, the, to the paintings I wanted to show because this one, uh, believe it or not, was finished... Um, like a week and a half ago. Okay, so I mean, we're we're contemporary. This is, this is like the newest painting that I have in here out of all the paintings I have here. And what what's happened is I I've gotten very subtle. Yeah. And not so much strong. So from previous paintings, I've started to like areas, and this area was driving me crazy. Uh, and then I said, ah. A little bit of cadmium orange, and then sometimes I'll go in. I'll have a, a paper towel or an old T-shirt. Oh yeah, and I'll wipe it, and then the pigment, because this the paint I use is the pigment mode. It's really great. Will still be there, but it's not totally gone. But this one needed, uh, and, and the reason my mind's fresh on this one because I just I can talk about it a little right. more in depth because it's just a couple weeks ago finished. Right. I mean, a week and a half ago. Uh, and it's dry. You can, you wow. can put, you can already, touch it. It's yeah. already it, dry. Yeah, because it's thin and the liquid. It's wow. amazing. The stuff is great. Um, you could do this with turp, but turp eats your color. It well, see, I thought this was turp here. They, they, it's ah, not. yes. Ah, see, good eye. Yeah, this drip. You can. Yes. What I do is, in, when I first started oil painting after doing the ceramic murals, I had large canvases. I mixed turp and linseed and oil, and I just literally poured them. Huge, I have some in my house. Huge, I mean, four by 60 by 48 paint of nothing but these drips. And then I went back in and paint. Then I dripped more and I fell in love with drips. And so what I do sometimes is I'll, I'll be going along and I'll stand back and I'll take a little bit of turp and a little bit of medium. I right. always add the, because you want to give it some body. You don't want right. turp eating your color. 
and I take it and I'll stand back and, <laughs> you know, I'll throw it. And I would, I would throw it here and it will bleed. Right. And you can see the bleeding happening and then I went in and then I painted another color on it. Sometimes just before it's, it's not totally dry, so I get this bleed. Right. But you can see the drips. Right. Anyway, so I do a lot of dripping underpainting. Okay. But I use media. It's important. To, you can't just do that with turp. It's not a good base to build up painting out right. with turp. Well, it's even meant to so thin it out with clean solids. brushes, right? Yeah. So, and it just fades out lighter. This is a remnants of my early, like in the 80s, or, or the, the late it, it, the 90s of, of watercolor. I did a lot of watercolors. Yes, and this I, has I very... find myself, this is a, I went, wow, I'm, I'm all the way back in 1998 uh, uh, doing these watercolors that I started with before I got into the oils. And that's the, the effect I like with it, with the mediums and the lesser paint. Anyway, so, so, yeah. so this one, when I look at it, I, I actually do see it representationally of, of for instance, there's the hills here, there's the water here, there's the, you know, you kind of get the, uh, the reflection on the water. I mean, I know, I know, of course, I have no idea what you're thinking about when you paint yeah, that, but that, don't we always create, pat, you know, we, we take all this information and we have to make a pattern out of it. Yes. And, and what happens is I'd like to believe, I'm going to look on the back of this, I, I have no, I think on the, on the back right, can you see what the, the name is? What's the name? Deerfield Valley Oil. Yeah, there you go. Okay. See, uh, so it is a landscape. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what happens is this could very well be the, the view from, uh, in my head, this is sort of uh, uh, the view from uh, Sugarloaf, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's just that meander. So sometimes they dictate uh, 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 that to me, and that's what it says to me. Right. And I, you know, somehow I'd like to believe I'm just painting these wonderful color, you know, uh, Rothko-like, Emily Mason-like paintings. And what's happened is, um, I'm a, I'm just, I didn't read this anywhere, but I believe that even though all of us uh, artists are people that deal with creating stuff, the matter where you stray. You can only do so much with the amount of stuff you've taken in since you were born. Right. So. A lot of my work ends up being, I would never go out and paint landscape. I'm just not a landscape painter. Right. But evidently, you're influenced. I'm influenced by the landscape where I live. I'm not going to bore you with the, I got cityscapes from my times in New York City. I grew up in New Jersey. I would play hookies from Catholic school and we'd go to New York City, we went to Greenwich Village. So here I'm painting buildings and golds and texture of my right. earlier work. And um, I call them cityscapes. Sure. So I've got cityscapes. I found out self-analyzing this stuff in uh, uh, landscapes and vineyards. So it's Western Mass, Martha's Vineyard, and New York City that influence my paintings. I'd like to believe other besides Emily Mason in color. And right. So well, but also, so with the other question I've been meaning to ask you, when you're painting, one of the things I used to do was I would crank music, oh. and the music I'm listening to would inspire me yeah. too. <laughs> So, what do you listen to, or okay. do you listen to music? Yes, uh, uh, I'm one of those, so this is a little alien, I know we can't have uh, music. In this studio, I'm pretty spoiled, I have four speakers, so I have like the surround sound that, that I put on. I have an iPad, those things you put yep. on. Yeah, I'm not too, but I, I had a graphic person load about 800 songs, and I put it on the, the playlist the and thing, right. and I hit <laughs> shuffle, Yeah, and then I go to work. So I will be in here painting, and it's funny you say it because it's a big part, not dictating, right? But but it dictates the whole way I go. I end up doing stuff like you know, starting out with, you know, I'll be listening to David Bowie. But it comes and goes. It's right. I need static, even in my ceramic tile bit. We always have music on, right? And um, it doesn't dictate it. But I'll find myself, you know, when I'm when I'm really in the zone, is I'll end up here dancing around to Jimmy Duran. I right. mean, the, sure, I got. Roy Rogers, I got David Bowie. So it's a shuffle, so there's not one genre. Right. And it's very important to me. It's the first thing I do when I go in my studio, downstairs or here, I put the music on. Right. And it leads my brain. Right. And I go about my business. But without that, this is, for me, this is very unusual for me to be this long in my studio without, and to, and, and, and right. to, and to have it with, with no music. And isn't it just joyful? Yeah. Yeah. 
Think about it. I'm singing Jimmy Durante. Oh my God. Ah, yeah. Singing so, Jimmy Durante. And I do this. I'm not even making this. This sounds like, you know, scripted out. Who here. listens to Jimmy Durante? Yeah, I know. Or Roy Rogers back in the South. And they're just, they come. Don't right. get me wrong. I got some hip stuff. I got Lady Gaga and all right. that stuff. Because the young person wrote it. And they, and it's a fun part of the, the joint part of my process. It's just, and it's a, a big deal for me. I can't, I couldn't go into a place and work in an environment like this with, with no static. Right. So how often are you even inspired? I mean, do you do well, you come up to the studio and say, "Well, I got to work because that's my job." I just it, it, great you asked that because I just the excitement you hear isn't so much. Oh, they're my paintings, and I'm talking to you. It's because if you talk to me the last year and a half, I tell you, I had zip, and I mean, it just it wasn't there. I have the time, I have the space. So what I do is I'll. Um, I'll uh, clean the studio, I'll order canvas, I'll, uh, I'll actually go up to Shelvin Falls and walk around, you know. And, Just waiting for something to trigger yeah, you. Yeah, as corny as that, you know, you're blocked, and it's frustrating, you know, it's like, oh, I can't produce masterpieces every week. Right. You know, and, and I know every artist feels this in music or writing or anything. You just. But the downtime is every bit as important as the productive time. Yeah, and you know, you, and here's the bummer is you want to be painting, but right. you know you've got to go through this. That's right this process, which is not part of where you really want to be. So you don't force yourself to always come and work on the painting? No, well, I've got, but yeah, and then I got just, obviously just recently I started producing these, and when I do, I'm, I'll get up, I'll come in my studio, uh, uh, and I'll come out here, and I work every morning, and they just flow, you know, and, they, and, they, and then I, I have them on these hooks, I hang them up out of the way, so I can work on six or seven paintings at a time. It's almost like you're manic when you're working. Yes. Yeah. And, and, I, and a lot of it has to do with, um, I have the space, if you have the luxury of a good size studio, but the mural business that I did for 25 years, it taught me if you're laying, if you're starting a project, like you guys setting up here, well, do as much as you can for the end result. Right. Uh, that that was my mind. in time because it was money. I had staff. You had to. It was money. There was hours involved. So you wanted to get the most for your buck. Here, I just want to produce uh, uh, more more paintings because it'll take me a day and a half to lay out the colors to do the starters. Then I go on and then I come back and then the whole process starts. So there's there's like ninety percent setup. Right, and so I want to get more bang for my buck. So I have, I got like the easel. I could even use a fourth easel. Uh, sometimes I put a table up here, right. and uh, and then the work because it's oil, it takes a while to dry. So yeah, I work, and it just and I'm possessed, and I love it. That that part of it, I'm possessed. But for a year and a half, I was walking around like whining a lot. Well, I think our timing's pretty good then. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Yes, Joe, we've moved on, and it looks like. You've moved on. Uh, this is much different than what I've seen. I mean, the, the, a lot of the same text, a lot of the same techniques, but an entirely different palette. What's going on? Um, yeah, this one was a, a big uh, uh, turning point for me in, in the progression of things when I was starting to leave uh, the uh, cadmium orange, yellow, you know, the, the wonderful cadmium paintings. Uh, that great, I love that palette, but I. I, I wanted to get into some uh, blues and greens and turquoise and purple, and I just started falling in love in this process with uh, with, with turquoise. Um, and so, you know, one color, it's amazing, it can influence you. So this particular painting, um, actually, I left my cadmium paintings, and, with, and then I went back uh, to them uh, so this would this, I, I might even keep this in my studio for quite a while because for me personally, it's a it's a big uh, uh, turning point. I've worked on this several times. I, I thought it was finished, and I keep I, you know I'm, I think I got to be done. Is that the last thing you added? Yeah, this this and this. I kept having trouble with this. I would love a painting all within yeah. this range almost. And, and well. At, the majority of the paintings that I have on my uh, website, I don't have any uh, in house right now. Um, they're in gal they're they're out, and uh, uh, they're um, uh, this color. This this there's these rich blues and, and ultramarines and, and turquoise, and it's it's much like this. And a, 
and and the cadmium colors uh, are minimal. Right. So I, I made a but this was the the painting for me personally that uh, uh, started changing everything for me, which. And I really like this painting, but and it's really forced me to start dealing with uh, uh, different shapes. And even this was was new for me, the way I did this. Right. So a lot of for me personally, a lot of a lot of surprises and um, happy surprises. I'm, I'm loving this area here. So for me, it's uh, about certain areas that I fall in love with in the painting. So it's the same process, different palette, and um, but it was a catalyst. For me leaving the uh, cadmium thing, which I went back to. This <laughs> this made me leave it, and then I went back to it. Am I making sense? Well, no, that? but the thing is, when you went back to it, you were, you were coming to it with a new set of eyes. Yes. This. And there, you probably incorporated some of what you had learned. Yes. So that then, even though it's still cadmium, I'm sure it's somehow different. Yes. And, 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 so let's explore that difference. Yes. So that last painting, somehow led you to this painting. Can you explain that? Yeah, I, actually I can't. <laughs> In a sense that, I don't know why the, the, the last painting with the purples and blues, uh, which was a turning point, which got me back to um, my, my cadmium uh, colored paintings. But something happened in between that my original cadmium paintings that I painted for the last 10, 12 years or so, um, they, I started getting more blues and greens and, 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 and a little bit. Uh, it's, it, 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 it ended up being, I put a lot more cadmium than I thought I would uh, in here. But this one I kept changing and it's not as thin uh, layered right. uh, as, as uh, some of that Deerfield landscape, the Deerfield Valley painting. But I kept changing the background and, but I didn't want to get it overpainted. Sometimes I have a tendency to kill the painting. You sure. just, you know, so the, 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 the background here was a, was a tough, I had kept having trouble. I must have changed that, and subtly, um, right. four, four times I kept changing that background, which dictated this shape going back in. Right. And then the final colors for me was this area here, which for me, made it all and and and, and this area well this is work. kind of like that last bit of green that was on that last painting yes so I, i'm yeah i'm pretty uh i'm happy with this right now and um th in the terms of that that and you had the drip technique in there but the it's under, you went you over it. underneath they, they right. were all it, that's what's crazy most of them um that we talked about uh were drips in the beginning and somehow the drips talk to me. They've always, I've always been comfortable starting with total chaos. Because they suggest shapes or ideas. Yes. And, and sometimes it, it, it works. And then other times you have to put so much paint on or different colors that it'll either become muddy or overly painted texturally wise, not right. paint. Right. And um, basically I, I set those paintings aside and they, they become, you know, maybe something I'll paint over. Uh, lately, and you had mentioned in the early part of the show, uh, I did take a bunch of the uh, cadmium um, paintings, uh, a, a slew of them, big ones, and painted over them using that blue and green and turquoise palette. So I eliminated, I'd go in and, and I'd have a painting like this, and I'd take some um, uh, liquid, uh, some uh, uh, white some uh, oil white, titanium, mm -hmm. some real strong white that just... Opaque. Yeah, really opaque, yes. And I would just come in and do this. Now what happens there is it, it had, there was a layer effect, so the feathering became really... You really had to work at it. Right. So there was this learning process of paint. When I paint over palettes that are, that are this color, it changes the whole way the painting is going to be. Oh, sure. Yeah. So one of the things I used to do is, so rather than going over with the opaque white and saying, okay, I'm doing a completely new painting, I would go with transparent colors over the old painting in different spots yeah. and hide to highlight what I liked about the old painting. It's like, I'm saving this one bit of this old painting and everything else is going to be new. And you couldn't do that if you went over it all with opaque. Yeah, so I don't do, yeah. to bring that transparent, and then a lot of times the warmth will come out when you have the transparency, if you have something really warm underneath, kind of will glow a little bit. Yes, and the old painting actually uh, 
has more to do with your finished painting. You think it's a new painting because they, they sort of outroll. And I've, I've, I've got some, I, I'm not going to pull them out, but I've got some that are just dead. I, I, I painted oh. them and then I went over an area when I should have never went over that. Now if I put another coat of white. So I have been painting, so that was a big deal for me. I just said, I, I hadn't done that in 16 years. I hadn't painted over white paint. I just have a, a bunch of paintings. And I says, you know, you can go, you can go, meaning I'm going to change them. Right. And that's what happened. This, this isn't one of them. But they all got me to these to the canvases we had talked about uh, today. My real early work uh, had, um, I would take canvases, the four, 48 by 60s. I would gesso them, even though they were pre gesso Right. Then I would go in and uh, liquid, uh, excuse me, Liquitex makes uh, textured medium, glass beads, uh, volcanic ash, uh, all this stuff. And I would texture it, and it's white. Right. So I would go in, and I would texture it with four or five like glass beads, and all this stuff, not knowing what it's going to become. So I'd have three canvases, five foot by uh, four foot, and white, and then I would gesso over that. Now I have this incredible white textured canvases. Wow. Then I would go in and oil. I know this out. Then I go oil paint on top of the acrylic, and I would add another liquid which was an impasto, which gave it more texture. So they're, this, they're heavy. Right, right. They became very thick. So for me to be, to that's how I started. And, and, and to be back at something that's this like, you know. Uh, you know Comparatively I mean, thin, but, but yeah. even so, this has a lot of paint on it. Yeah, it does. Hopefully it's not, it, it works with, with, with this. And I also, in a lot of, I look at these and, and I talk about this stuff and I have uh, uh, a, a, a great critic. Uh, uh, Muse, uh, my wife Annie, uh, who uh, is has got a, uh, she's an artist, and uh, and I'll, I'll ask her, so you got to come see this work. Well, there are paintings uh, that I just really love, so it doesn't matter what she says. Sure. I, I know that. You so, know in your heart, this is a great painting. Yeah, yeah. And so she'll come in and say, well, that's overworked. This this is not finished. You know, she'll do this. Right. She'll stand here. What a gift. And create it. Yeah. And then she'll leave and I'll, I'll say, I hate you. And she's leaving <laughs> the, the studio. And nine times out of ten, she's right. I'll come back and I'll, you know, and I'll change it. Because you need that. You Because... Um, I need it anyway. I need I need not her approval because it's you need her eye. I need her eye, and 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 everybody kind of looks at you when you say it's your wife because you know she's like, oh that's beautiful dear that's wonderful oh, isn't, that, isn't that gorgeous and that, that I can't that wouldn't, that wouldn't be help good. You. No no. So I do a lot of sometimes the finished work and then sometimes I just say no I'm not saying you you're crazy Maybe that's right you know and there are certain ones I can. Well, I isn't can that interesting too there. how multiple people can look at the same painting and based upon where they're coming from. It affects them so differently. I will say this: I've had paintings four or five years ago where she said, "This, this is no, this," is. and then I bring it out years later. She goes, "What a nice piece!" I said, "Don't you say that." So you remember the paintings? Oh she... yeah, oh yeah, because and she doesn't. Yeah, that's the truth. So it's just so happy to be learned, where she was you, at you, that you day. You learn by by involving other people and being thick-skinned and. Yeah. Oh well. So, anyway, anytime you put your artwork out there as an artist, you're inviting criticism. Yes. So I, you have to develop a thick skin. I, I, I always like to interject this. When I was going to GCC, uh, it was great for my, the start of my, my art career. Uh, I had taken other courses before I got to GCC, GI Bill. So I'm taking painting, I'm taking uh, printmaking, I'm taking all... So my peers, the veterans that were there then and, and younger students, would say, Oh, you artists. Boy, you guys got it easy. You really do. And I said, yeah, yeah, we do. I says, but if you handing a psych paper or an English paper, and everyone in the class and, sees it, and, and, no, but they, but they don't. That's right. So it's only you and the professor That's know right. that it really was terrible. Right. When you're when you're sitting around with twenty people on little stools and everybody sees something you've done, and everybody knows it doesn't work, including yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a real tough thing to do that, and oh, you've yeah. got to do that. It's part of the process, and if you don't do that, you're not going to go anywhere. Well, that, and those, that critiquing process really helps develop your own eye, because other people will show you things that doesn't occur to you. And then all of a sudden, oh, that's right, I, I didn't understand. This is what I'm missing. Yeah. Same thing happens with musicians all the time. And it's funny, it's like, so I play with my friends, and my wife never, almost never says that she likes what she hears. 
It's just noise to her. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. my friends and I will listen to it later and go, whoa, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, so you learn. You, you learn. learn. You just have to, you have to, if it speaks to your heart, it speaks to your heart. But one of the other things is that you also are the creator, but you also have to have a business. Oh, yeah. So then how much does, are you affected by knowing about your market? I mean, have you developed a, at this point, kind of a reputation or a style? This is a Joe McCarthy type of painting and uh, it, it's marketed you know, that way. There, that's a, that's a fine, uh, fine edge and that's open, uh, that'll, that'll be going on long after every, you know, artist come and go and die and that, that's continuing conversation. I'm on the side of, after being, having the mural business of producing art. Right. But it was a business, right. you know. Uh, and then approaching my painting the same way. So there's some creative juices that happens in the uh, the real world. Right. That's what I like to call it because there's got to be money. And then the painting world. Now, a couple of things I'll say. I got you. Got to stay true to your school. Everybody knows that, and you do that. And I and I and I, and I uh, hopefully I do because that's why you paint. Uh, but I also know, for instance, that. Um, and some of the stuff that's dictated by the industry. If you want to sell your stuff in galleries, right. if you really don't care and you think you're, you know, you don't want to make money right. to buy more art supplies so you can keep doing this, um, the, the, then that's fine. Uh, I look at it like I think I believe paintings. Everybody's paintings and everybody's music. Right. It's you part find of a home somewhere. Right. It's gonna. And that's that's my idea. The but the bottom line is we live in a. a, a I'm gonna boil it down to we live in a, a culture that you have to make what's called money you need some we, we live in a culture of commodity a commodity so uh, when i talk to the students when i do demos you you, you got to do that don't be a, don't be a, a, afraid to do that and i was never afraid to do the murals to make a buck and the reason was not to make a buck it was so i could buy more canvases right so the real world will leave me alone in my studio this is my world i can control it Right. We all know we can't control a lot of things in life. And I tell my staff with the tile murals, we can do anything we want in here. Out there is the real world. So we've got to get the jobs out, got to make a buck, and we can do it next week. Right. And, and that was, so I'm from that school. So going down to, now boiling all that down, going to art, landscapes sell, mm -hmm. people, majority. We'll right. go up, what sells the most? Landscapes, Velvet people. Elvis. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and because people in that market strategy and, and, and others can identify with it. As soon as you enter abstract, you just lost lo a huge audience. That's like playing jazz. Yes, yes. So, and you know that going in. So, I do these big trees, these, these uh, because we're here in fall foliage. Sure. And I love them, and they're huge, and they're stylish, thick, and everything. Um, and I love them. And I've sold a bunch, and I says, well, you should do trees in the landscapes in the vineyard, which, which I do. I said, I can't, I, because I have to go, this is what I have to do. I right, don't, you follow I your want, muse. I want to do those, you know, I, I just, I want to, and the size. In New England, my 48 by 60s, no matter what I think, no matter, I've got dear friends that bought a lot of my paintings, but a lot of people don't have room in New England, small houses. Right. New York, LA, you know, Connecticut, bigger houses, newer houses, they can fit this stuff. Right. But I just learned serendipitously, and that isn't why I do it, that the gallery on there, one of the gallery, uh, Acton, in, uh, Powers Gallery in Acton, Mass., I learned that um, a good size, I mean, they talk business. Right, so they, they know. Oh, they say, oh, these are good sizes, what are you talking about? I had a bunch of 40 by 40s. They said, oh, that's a great size. And then another staff person said, oh, I just happen to like it, but evidently for the marketplace, that they're, it's a good size. No, I didn't say why. Right. I just said, oh. Right. You accepted that they. I didn't it. go out and say, well, I want all forty. But it's nice when your work parallels with the people that are uh, uh, working in a system. And it capital. fits in your vehicle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there. That's my uh, windy answer on, on the economic. Well, you, right. So, Joe, I, we've pretty much run out of time. You've been tuned to a special episode of Local Bias. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And take care. <laughs> <laughs>